Happy to welcome you back to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz, Canes, and the Pitt Panthers at 12 o'clock on Saturday. That'll be a great one. Before we get to that, uh, jump back maybe one last thing in North Carolina State. And I thought this would be so important to your team if they could visualize what a winning locker room was going to feel like and how much of a relief that would be, the celebration, just enjoy the feeling of winning. And they got that. They did. And they, they had been close, right? right and, yeah. and, and I think I think having that you know sort of taken away um, by the ending of the, of the two, first two league games made it so much sweeter. And um, that was one of the best post-game locker rooms I've been in at Miami in the six years I've been here. They, they were they were generally excited, and, and, and it wasn't just it was a little more than just a win on that night. It was what they'd been through, how they stuck together. Um, even on the night, the game wasn't easy. We knew it wouldn't be easy. State's got a really good team, and um, we, when we went in there at halftime. You know, we were down. We just kind of, you know, you know, given momentum back, and and for them to go out and, and find a way to turn that around and, and get the win was huge. You know, everybody looks for something to play for, and coach. I don't even know if this is a question, but. So many of your guys, so many in that locker room, even the guys we had on the post-game show, they went out of their way to show their support for you and this coaching staff and this team. And that tells you, or tells me, that something's working. When a, when a, when a young man unsolicited makes sure that they bring those, to those areas up, there's a good message being taught. Yeah, that, that's very kind. I, I think it's about the team and the teammates. Um, and, and the, their ability to play for each other, you know, and I, I think in this program we try to be the same people every day and be who we say we are, and, um, but ultimately it's going to come down to the kids and, and do they want to line up and, and, and fight with the guys next to them. And I think what we've proven is that, you know, I always say like-minded people attract like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And if you get a bunch of people that are mentally tough and that take pride in that, you know, that are resilient, that don't flinch, you know, that, that look adversity in the eye and don't run, because those are pretty uncommon traits. It's, it's easy to cut bait now. <laughs> it's the most easy thing to do. And uh, we got a lot of guys that are into that. We got a lot of guys that, that take pride in kind of being tough, you know what I mean? And, and being able to, to do things that others couldn't do. And you get a locker room full of guys like that, that you end up with a tough football team. Uh, we did talk about the secondary. We should mention Marcus Clark did start for you. How did he do? And then James Williams seems like he's covering a lot of ground. There was one particular play you sent him on a blitz. I, I was in fear of the quarterback's life. <laughs> yeah. Um, first, Marcus played very well, okay. you know, in his first start. And, and we thought he would, but, you know, you got to go out there and do it. And, and State's got receivers. Their, their superpower is, is great contested catches down the field. Um, in 88 to 86, didn't make any of those. You know, we kept waiting. We're here. When's the deep ball going to come to one of their guys? And it's not, they're not trying to run by you. They got, they got us later in the game on a different matchup, but they just kind of body position you, and, and they've made spectacular catches. Um, it never happened. Marcus did a great job fighting the fadeaway in the red zone, and they're a great fade throwing catching team. Um, hit one against Clemson, so that'll do wonders for his confidence. And Marcus can run, and he tackled well with, um, other than one play, so that really helped our secondary as well. And, yeah, you mentioned James. We, we, we do like blitzing James. You know, he's got a knack for it. He times up pretty good. Uh, there's one where he was free on the quarterback and <laughs> whacked him pretty good. And it, I wish we could have gotten the matchup better on the routes um, because it would have been a sack and maybe a strip fumble, who knows. But, but he is, he's, he's quite a sight when he gets a full head of steam and comes at, at, your, at your quarterback, and that's, <laughs> that's, not, that's not an accident. <laughs> Coach, you talk about all season long and really since you've been here, complimentary football. Yeah. And I think one thing that I, I saw, I took off the stat sheet, was – Miami's offense won the time of possession. If we take out Central Connecticut, I believe that's the first time that that's happened this season, and that certainly makes a difference on your on the defensive it side does. of the ball. Yeah, the offense is doing a nice job protecting the defense. I, I thought I thought the second half was a great example of what we talk about when we talk about complimentary football. I mentioned the defense giving up the touchdown before halftime. The offense goes right out in the third quarter and scores a touchdown. So that's one guy picking up another guy's back, right? Hey, defense had a slip up. Offense got your back. Um, then there were a couple times where offense couldn't get going and we had to punt the ball out. Headley did a great job of getting the ball out and, and 50 yard punts that got fair caught at the 50 instead of at the 38 and the defense would get a stop, you know, on short fields. That was big, you know. Um, defense gave up a touchdown, they get the fake punt. Defense gave up a touchdown early in the fourth quarter. Oh man, we're down, what's gonna happen? Offense goes right down the field. Tyler hits Rambo on the RPO for a touchdown. So again, when we fell behind, 
Tyler and the offense brought us right back ahead. That was huge. And then the last sequence, you know, we have a crazy uh, special teams play. It's a weird miss hit kickoff. It should go out of bounds. It doesn't. Should go for a touchback. It doesn't. Brashard's got to field it. Can only get back to the 10. Oh, man, we're in tough shape. Can't take a chance down there. Again, we got a punt. State's on a short field, only down by one, and the defense gets a four and out. You know what I mean? Great complimentary football where we had to pick up the offense. Offense couldn't get a first down. Defense says, that's okay. We'll go out there at midfield, and we'll get it stopped. And then the final sequence, the offense getting the, the final first down to Mallory. So, again, a great job of, of the two. If When one faltered, the other side had its back. Uh, we'll get to Pitt here in a second. But on the special teams, uh, interesting mm -hmm. to note, their guy had three 50-yard punts, and Headley matched them for 50-yard yeah. punts. And then very perceptive on your part, I don't know if they'll take credit for it or not, but that kid's helmet came off. It means he's out of the play. And I'm not so sure that the guys that are supposed to notice it notice it until there was a little bit of an eruption on your sideline. Yeah, it, it, there, there was. There, there was definitely some yelling and screaming uh, coming from our sideline because it's a – look, look, it, it was a fortunate play. The football right. gods, you know, maybe a little breeze came in and blew the guy's helmet off because – um, we have to take care of the football. And we didn't fumble it once on a play, we fumbled it twice. That's something that's in our control. Um, but we were very fortunate. Their guy's helmet did come off, and, and, um, and as a result, he was not eligible to recover the ball. You know, So sometimes those are the breaks, right? Those are the things that happen. Uh, um, and that was a big one, though, because obviously setting them the, setting them inside our 10-yard line would have been a, not ideal. I'll take the break. I mean, you know, even their field goal bounced off the upright and went through. We hit the upright the same spot as Borgallis' uh, field goal. So we'll take that uh, helmet flying off as a break. Pitt, they're averaging 45, 48 points a game. Uh, the quarterback, Pickett, has been tremendous so far. The one interception, 23 touchdown passes. Uh, so they present some pretty unique challenges, I would yeah. imagine, for your defense. Yeah, Kenny Pickett is on fire. I mean, he's on fire. Um, we know him well. You know, this is really yeah. the fourth time. We didn't play him last year, but we've played him uh, f three other times, I suppose, going back to his first year when, when they beat us. We were undefeated up there at Heinz. He, um, I mean, he can rip it. He's always been able to rip it. He's always had a really strong arm. He's always been a great athlete. And I think a big reason why he only has a one interception is because if things don't go well in the pass concept, he can get out of there. And he is a problem scrambling to throw as guys on cover or scrambling to run. And that wears you out because they do a really nice job. They're, they're kind of a West Coast-based pass offense. So you've really got to match up your routes well, right? It's just hard to cover because they, they, they've got good concepts. And when you match up routes, there's no one left to match up on the quarterback usually. And so um, the four defensive linemen got to do a great job with their rush lanes and be disciplined to try to not open up, you know, obvious gas. But Truth be told, you got five guys blocking four. There's going to be an escape, you know, hatch for the quarterback if he wants to get out. So um, their, their pit skill at wide receiver has gotten better every year over the last couple of years, um, and they're doing a really nice job of protecting him as well. Coach, they've got experience at wide receiver, and then a standard, and this is a compliment, pit offensive lineman, big, strong guys that that can run block as well. And seniors almost all the way across the board. They're old. They, they, they're experienced. They've done it. They know what they're doing. They've added a little bit of tempo to their routine now to try to give them an advantage. And I think that's another big reason why they're scoring um, a ton of points and, and, and massing a, a ton of yards. I mean, Pat Narduzzi's always built this program on tenacious defense and, and kind of you know getting you into a stranglehold and, and lower scoring games. And we last time we went up there, it was no one was going to score 20 right. points that day. We could have stayed there all night. And no one was going to get to 20 points. Um, but they, they, you feel like they've kind of let the reins off of that offense a little bit, and now they're starting to score points. But Pitt's still got a great defense. And, you know, when you're averaging 40 points a game, you don't have to be perfect on defense anymore. So they, you know, they're always great on third down defense. They're always very, very difficult to, wait, to play against because they deny everything on first and second down. So it's quite a challenge. Yeah, they, uh, they want to strangle their defense. They want to strangle your run game and then say we're going to hit your quarterback before you hit us. But to me – the kryptonite to their defense has always been good throws equal touchdowns. That's they know that too, yeah. and they're they're going to put the odds on. You know, we, we, we talked about earlier with 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 a game strategy. They're going to say that's a low percentage, and you're not going to hit it. And if you hit it once, you're not going to hit it all 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 afternoon. And uh, and they've been right more often than they've been wrong. Um, so it's gonna, it's a great challenge, as you mentioned first, to protect our quarterback. 
Um, and you've got to win some one-on-ones. They are not worried about that. They're going to let you throw the ball one-on-one down the field with them. And, you know, if you remember the game in 2016 when Amon Richards went wild on him, and yeah. they weren't going to change because they were going to recruit to the system. You have to give them credit for that, and they have. Um, they've gotten better and better every year. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, the ball's going to be in the air. They know it. Everyone that plays Pitt is going to throw the ball deep. Pitt knows it. Everyone knows it. Um, who's going to win those one-on-one battles? And I think that's a big key to the game. Another key to every team is confidence. They just beat Clemson, uh, gave them really one of the worst losses they've had since like 2014. What, what does that do to their confidence? I mean, it's at home. Miami's the road team. And they're thinking this is, this is their year to win the whole thing as far as the ACC. Yeah, no, there's no doubt. I mean, I mean you can see that in the way Pitt – I mean, Pitt – even in their game against Clemson, they weren't hoping to beat Clemson. They knew that they could beat Clemson. Mm. I mean, they just – they played that game with different – and they really took it to Clemson. And, and, and um, you know, Clemson had their struggles on offense, but they've been great on defense all year. That's and they right. hung 464 on them and, and, and really were kind of running the clock out at the end. So, um, th- this, is a, this is what happens. We talk about Tyler's emergence with us. When you've got a fifth-year quarterback like Kenny Pickett and he's having the year he's having – Everybody on the team is more confident when you got a guy like that. So, um, got to go up there on the road. I mean, you saw NC State's confidence this year compared to last year because they beat Clemson. Now, we got State here. You know, now we got to go to Hines. Um, it'll be, you know, you imagine there'll be a great crowd, maybe a little bit different than what we've seen a couple last couple of times we've been up there. And uh, it's going to be a big time environment. I think our guys will be excited to get up there and go. Yeah, they have uh, 13 super seniors, 60 year players on their team as we wrap it up. Uh, the confidence, perhaps, that your players felt in the locker room after the win against North Carolina State. Uh, how do you get that to carry over into the game at 12 yeah. o'clock? Well, like I said, our confidence is that we can accomplish hard things. Our, our, our confidence that, we, that we, we know we're tough, we know we're resilient, and we know those things matter in big-time games. Because to go beat a team like Pitt, it's going to be difficult on the road. But we can do difficult things. Now, we found out last week is the better we play – the better our chances of winning. So what does that mean? Well, when we tackle better, you know, when we block better, when we run the ball better, when we, when we catch the ball, those type things. And I think, I think that's what our players are understanding is that our mentality is right and it's been right. Now we're starting to play better. We're starting to, 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 to see the fruits of that labor. Some of that because of we're just coaching it better. Some of that because of making some depth chart changes. Some of that because of just experience. But, but all the above combined, um, there's a lot of us to play a better team, a, 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 play a better game, and, and that gives us better results. Coach, when I look at this football game, I, I go back to last week, and there wasn't a takeaway on either side. I mean, that's – and you see how close it is. It seems to me that in this ball game uh, against Pitt, that whoever gets the takeaway is going to have a huge advantage. It's going to be, it's gonna be a, a, a big advantage, as you mentioned. Uh, even field position, they're not to drive the ball the length against those defenses. Obviously, we've been super challenged more, more so than I've been at any point in my career to, to, to get takeaways. Sometimes, who knows, maybe they just come later in the year, maybe they come in bunches. But our offense has done a really nice job uh, protecting the football. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, off of the game, off the North Carolina game, we didn't protect it well. We, we really reestablished that uh, this past week. It's going to be super important because, again, they come after the quarterback hard and they want to force him to make mistakes either on strip sacks or hurry interceptions. Well, there are a lot of twists and turns in the story of college football. And I don't think the final chapter has been written on the University of Miami this year. I think we've got a couple of very good chapters still to come. So uh, we look forward to that, Coach. It's always November they remember. That's right. All right, we'll con- we will continue on the show right after this. With U Health Virtual Clinics, you can see our experts in every specialty, wherever you are. University of Miami health system providers are available here for all your health care needs. All you need is a phone or tablet to schedule a virtual visit with us. See a U-Health provider virtually today or at a time that's convenient for you. Visit umiamihealth.org slash virtual clinics or call 305-243-4000. I will fight. I always do until my heart is black and blue. Cause I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up, giving up, no, not yet. 